have to have the first track of the album just be that. My Invisalign has... <laughs> I have taken out I my Invisalign. I have taken out I was... my Invisalign and this is the album. <laughs> <laughs> Billie Eilish is one of, if not the most influential artist of the modern era. Dave Grohl even compared her effect on younger generations to what Nirvana did during the 90s. The year her breakout album, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go, came out, she was the second most streamed artist in the world, behind only Post Malone. And you know what I'm gonna say next, right? They recorded it in their bedroom at home. That's cool, right? Genius. Not to mention, actually, they also recorded it on tour, like in and out of hotel rooms. And these songs aren't just good for being recorded in a bedroom. They're not even like a good in a lo-fi way. Many consider Phineas's work as a producer and an audio engineer on this album to be the gold standard for modern contemporary recording. Seriously, I can't tell you how many times in audio school either a professor or a guest speaker would say, if you want to be the next Phineas, we just make music in a bedroom together. We still do that, and they let us do that. This is to all of the kids who are making music in their bedroom today. You're gonna get one of these. So here is what we're going to do. We're gonna analyze the production of this album in depth, from the gear they use, to the plugins, to the mixing choices, all the small granular details that kind of combine together to make the Billie Eilish sound, so that you can use these techniques for yourself, or maybe just nerd out on some cool Billie Eilish stuff. So so let's start with some backstory, shall we? We'll go through this kind of quick because I think a lot of people already know this door. What is that? Is that 2001 A Space Odyssey? That's kind of crazy. I've been wanting to watch that movie forever and here it is in, in my own video? H how? I don't understand. Oh, that's because I got a Surfshark VPN and that gives us access to 98 different versions of Netflix across a bunch of different countries. This one, this is Japan. You, you always wanted to go to Japan, right? Well, you did it, congrats, good job. I was thinking next we could go to Denmark to see the Lord of the Rings series, what do you think? Dude, that, that's awesome, Th thanks for doing this. Yeah, don't thank me, I, I'm literally you. Anyway, Surfshark VPN helps you out in a bunch of other ways besides just seeing a bunch of cool movies and Netflix and stuff like that. Surfshark VPN helps you browse the web way more securely, protects you from identity theft, it hides your locations from advertisers. Did you know that they can actually track your location and change the price depending on where you live? Oh, really? Yeah, they really can. Um, anyways, you're safe now. You're welcome. Um, now, now say the thing I told you to say, please. Go on. Oh, um, you can use code AUDIOHAZE to get three months for free, actually. Thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Anyways, where do you want to go next? I, I was thinking Australia. Yeah? Maybe. Okay. So Billy and Phineas grew up homeschooled in LA. They had a two bedroom house and each one of them had a bedroom and their parents slept on a futon in the living room. I would not do that for my child. Also, I don't have a child. This is, a, this is a theoretical child. Now, the reason this is important is because they had more time and were encouraged to be creative within their own home. Everything involved in what we're about to discuss is because of the environment they grew up in. We'll touch on this a little bit more towards the end. But everything about this album centers around that studio in Phineas's bedroom, which leads us to our first section. I'm a big sort of advocate for not buying a bunch of expensive gear. You can make stuff with great stock plugins from Logic or Ableton. So let's go over the gear I was able to nail down while researching. I'll link everything in the description if you wanted to go check that gear out. They are affiliate links though, so I will get a percentage of that revenue. So if you hate me, just Google. It. First up to bat is the Neumann TLM-103. This is one of Neumann's more affordable, more affordable transformerless condenser microphones. It is characterized by its smooth, mostly neutral tone with a slight presence boost in the upper end. It adds kind of a bit of a shine and air and breathiness to a vocal take. This is the microphone that is almost exclusively used for vocals on the record. He actually uses a Telefunken 251 for Billy Now, but that was not until the second album. 
problem. Also, Billy's technique when using this microphone is, is really crucial here, but we will get to that whenever we break down the production. Phineas mixes through a Universal Apollo 8 that is going into Logic, and he mixes out of Yamaha HS8s. Billy, I believe I saw, has HS5s in her room. Phineas records drums using either battery or Logic's native drum machine. He frequently uses sound toys, highly recommend. Sound toys is awesome. And that's kind of where he's getting a lot of this grit and distortion on the low end if you're interested. Nasty. In terms of hardware instruments, you'll often find Phineas using a Rolly Seaboard and an OP-1 but most of it is digital in the box. But if you go, no, 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 I, I compressed it that way on purpose. I like it. Even if it was an accident, if you like how it sounds, then it's the correct way because taste is everything. So with all of that gear in mind, let's get down to the nitty gritty, shall we? Billy and Phineas's production choices here are really unique for a number of different reasons. Number one, all the rhythm and instrumentation is incredibly sparse. Often it's just composed of drums, a bass line, and maybe some pads in the high end to kind of ease up on all that low end buildup. And number two, nearly all harmonic content in Billy's songs are primarily composed of Billy's voice. Chordal information and melodic information, Billy is often carrying 80% of that, or at least on most of the tracks. Okay, so I'm gonna break this down into instrumental and vocal then, and we'll get a little bit more in depth on both of those. And like, I, I love minimalism, I love some Simplicity. So anything that's just like a, a wonderful foundation for other things to develop is really exciting to me. One thing about the instruments on a Billie Eilish track is they're really not afraid to overload a signal creatively. And what do I mean by that? They often aren't afraid to produce in the wrong way. Letting instruments clip and distort until they are completely beyond their original tone. This also kind of fills out the stereo information a little bit more. Because there aren't that many tracks, something like a typical 808 sound that exists almost entirely in the sub bass, it kind of fills out the mid-range and extends further than a traditional sort of sub bass might. Here, check out this clip. This, this is what she sent me. And so I layered one EQ band, one compressor, we to sound as distorted another as EQ sound band, anywhere. another series of compressors, and another EQ band. And talking about rhythm, you'll often find that a lot of these sounds are sampled and found sounds rather than your standard snare or hi-hat. And this kind of allows them to subvert the traditional expectation for these instruments. Wait, that happens in Australia? That's, that's just every time you cross a street in Australia, you hear that. Wow. All right. Yeah, the thing people think are hi-hats and bad guys is actually just that. Duh. Now, as we already mentioned, oftentimes these instruments occupy primarily the low end, leaving tons of open room for the vocal to sit atop of. These beats are often pretty simple and they fill what's called the pocket, something to serve as a foundation for the vocals to build off of. And when they are, they aren't very huge, if that makes sense. Phineas and Billy are big fans of what I call the anti-chorus or the anti-drop. Call it what you want, but essentially what it is is building up this anticipation for this big giant chorus or something something like that, and then dropping into a much quieter groove-based, pocket-based section. You can also kind of think of like Dua Lipa's Don't Start Now or Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes as an example of using instruments to fulfill what would be kind of a larger chorus. I can always like figure out a harmony and Phineas is pretty much the same. It's because we spent so much time in a choir. Right, okay, so vocal production. This is huge in more ways than one because the recording techniques and the production used are all really built to make the vocals massive, which is a bit ironic because in order to achieve this, Billy sings incredibly quietly. And that quiet singing, that is the key here. Billy gets right up on top of this microphone, almost treating a very sensitive condenser microphone like a dynamic. And for Billy, this works out marvelously. 
But why? Because she's taking advantage of what we call the proximity effect. Whenever an artist is recording and gets closer to a microphone, kind of like this, a few things happen. First, an increase in bass and low end. That makes Billy's vocals sound pretty massive, pretty large for how quiet they are. Second, it minimizes room reflections. That's important for any environment that isn't properly acoustically treated like a bedroom studio, like mine, like anyone's. The farther away you get, you're gonna hear more of the room Room, more reverb. But by getting right on top of the microphone, you get this sort of ASMR effect. In fact, that is exactly how ASMR artists achieve that effect. The TLM 103 is a very sensitive microphone, and by recording at such close proximity, you're left with a very clean, very large vocal. Now, the reason I say for Billy specifically, the way Billy sings is A, very quiet. Her vocal technique lacks plosives a lot of times, the P sounds, like the the sounds that can distort a sensitive microphone. And there's not a lot of dynamic range in her vocal takes, so she can be kind of quiet and be right up on the microphone, but if she gets louder, they're gonna have to cut or she's gonna have to move back. So this brings me to the next part of Billy's vocals, the sheer amount of layers. I don't have a final count on the vocal tracks, but probably around 100. We've already established that the instruments exist primarily in the low end, and they are kind of the foundation to build the vocals on. But Billy carries nearly all of the other harmonic information through her use of harmony and her use of vocal doubling, or essentially tracking the same part twice, three times, four times, five times, etc. in a row. Do you hear how exact every single letter is? I'm like very, listening to it and going like, I didn't sing the word white right. It's not the right, it's not the right way. So whenever I was researching this video, there was one trope that kept showing up. An obsession to detail in general, but specifically an obsession with getting the right take. Those are all Separate cuts. audio files that have been put into one take. We got up to like 87 takes. Wow. It's important to point out that across Billy's whole discography, there is no vocal pitching, no auto-tune. The only point in time where they do auto-tune is if it's like a creative choice, but that's really uncommon. Which we've done, by the way, one of. Yeah, and everybody hated it, so we're not doing it again. We learned our <laughs> lesson. I know it sounds like it. If you would have asked me, I would have said that there was some tuning there, but they are obsessed with getting the perfect take, not only on like the lead vocal, but even like vocal throws, like the duh and bad guy. You wanna know how many takes of duh you did? 34. Duh. Ooh, that's how hot. I can do it. That's mm -hmm. hot. I like that one. Duh. 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 Keep them going. Now, it may not seem like a big deal at first. After all, a lot of artists are obsessed with getting the right take. But when you compound that across multiple layers of vocal harmonies, sometimes 20 to 50 layers or even 100 layers, that's when the perfection of all these takes really starts to take hold and you get the glossy, perfect production value, but you do it without vocal tuning. It's really cool. There's such a kind of a like private feeling to what we're doing because we're not at a recording studio where different people are there every day and people are down the hall. Like it's our house and it's where we live and it's where we have experienced everything. Now we all love analyzing the more measurable stuff. What gear was used, what techniques were used in production and mixing. And no doubt that has a huge impact on the final product, especially for something new and novel like this album was. But more than anything, I want to emphasize the power of the environment that this album was recorded in. For those of you who know me, you know my goal is to show you how amazing of a song, a production, of a mix that you can make without expensive gear and specifically doing it in your own home. But the home studio can run deeper than that. Without the environment they grew up in, without the relationship that Billy and Phineas have, a home where you're encouraged to be creative, where you have the time to write and record, this record would have never existed. Create a space that you're comfortable with with people that you're also comfortable with. That's the foundations of this record, and that's what's really awesome about it. This really could not have been done in five to six sessions in a professional studio that costs like $200 per hour. No, it wouldn't have happened like this. And maybe your album can't either, who knows? Uh, and I know Phineas and Billy aren't using the cheapest gear out there, but hey, Ocean Eyes, their breakout single was recorded on a $100 microphone called the AT2020. I would assume that Scarlet 18i20 that is sitting above his fancy Apollo, that was probably what they used to record on. So if you have a Scarlet 2i2, you have that gear. And that song is currently over a billion 
streams. So look around at what you have now, pick it up, and start recording. And with that cheesy note, thank you so much. If you made it this far, I, I really never asked this, but people are saying I should, so I will. Please subscribe. I guess that's it. See you later.